What's going on guys? What's cracking? What am I gonna say? What am I gonna say? Back in the garage again. Um, always modding the cars here lately. I'm trying to keep content up. I've got new mods constantly coming in. Uh, and the biggest part of that is to sponsors. And today's video is sponsored by Superclass. Superclass was kind enough to send me their new short shifter. But not just any short shifter. A C's repli replica. Um, if you guys are super fans or anything like that, or if you own a Supra, you know that the C short shifter for the Supra is the end all be all. That's the best short shifter out there, period. End of story. And for the MR2, it is no different. So what we have here is everything that comes with the C short shifter. And this is, this is the super class version of it. So some things have been tweaked and changed and made better. Um, like this tab here. So on a factory, which I'll show you here too, even on the factory shifter, this is like a little welded tab. Now it's all one piece. This is stainless steel now. Um, it has a proper drop plate, comes with all new hardware. Um, I opted for a new shift knob and this also, I also opted for the solid uh, base plate bushings. Now, once I get in there, I'll show you these bushings factory are rubber and they tend to move around, which gives this a, a sloppy feel. Um, MR2s are like front wheel drive cars, okay? So the motor's in the back and has pretty much the same layout as a front wheel drive car, except in the back of the car. You have cables that run to it and that's how you shift the gears. There's, there's so many more things that can go wrong and make the shifting feeling feel like shit. Period of the story. It just doesn't have a good crisp feeling. I mean, it, the car feels good and it has a 93 shifter, which is a pretty coveted shifter, but this should change it. But let's get in the car here. I'm gonna show you how it shifts right now. I also decided to take the tops off to make this a little bit better for today, but if we get down here, this is a 93 shifter. You can see the throws are pretty long. So if I do that again here, they're pretty long. Now, as you can see, the shifter itself sits nice and low, and that's another misconception I wanna get over with you guys here today. This isn't gonna change the height of the shifter. If anything, it might actually make it slightly higher from my understanding, but I won't say that until we get down and actually look at it. The problem is, people think of short shifters, they truly think it's a shorter shifter, and that's not true. A true short shifter actually just shortens up the throw, not the physical height of the shifter itself. Now, in some cases that is true. Uh, some companies try to make them a little bit shorter as it gives it a little bit nicer feel in some cases, but for the most part, the manufacturer got it right. And that's at the proper height, uh, especially depending where your arm rests and everything. So the only thing you wanna shorten up is the actual throw because believe it or not, and like in this, you didn't think about it until I'm trying to speed shift and I'm like, all right, I'm already got the clutch in now. I'm like, shit, I need to get this into gear. And like, you're trying to do as fast as you can. And just that millisecond, it makes such a difference. Uh, especially now driving the Supra and then going to this, it's like night and day. So I'm really excited to get this in and then show you guys the difference. Now you're gonna be asking, well, how do I start? First thing we have to do is take off the shift knob, then take off this plastic panel. After we take off this plastic panel, we have to take this entire center piece out, which seems like a lot of work, right? Well, it's not. There's only two screws on the side, then you have to take the four screws that are inside of this, two inside of here, two up here, and then this all falls out, or pops out, I should say. Uh, there's little cap screws over here that you have to get to, but it's super, super easy. So I'll start off here by taking off the shift knob, And then we'll move on from there and I'll show you guys piece by piece. All right guys, so I've got the center console and stuff out here. Just wanted to show you a couple things here. Uh, this shows you all your shifter cables then. Um, you've got your side by side cable, as you can see there it goes. And then obviously your forward and back cable. So yeah, um, what we have to do here is take this panel out because we had to put a drop plate in this. Um, we also have to unbolt this then too, which see here and it's supposed to be loose like that so you can see how it moves back and forth you need it to be able to rotate so what we need to do now is uh, remove that uh, there's one two three four five six bolts here and I'll show you where the shifter um, solid bushings go then too when this is all done all right guys so we've got the shifter out here everything is out of the car now left the plate in there itself you can pull out those two tabs right there where the the red and that blue wire show or blue cables go through you can see the little pull tabs there um, they were giving me a little bit of fight and I just didn't feel like messing with them So I wanted to pull out the whole entire shifter anyways, and then I'll put those solid shifter bushings in but I've got the shifter out here We've got the metal cup that the shifter sits in uh, and it's got a little rubber uh, Piece in the bottom now what I'm gonna do is clean out all this old grease and I've got new grease over here I'm gonna re-lube all this up now another thing people do is you can buy new one of these plastic cups now I don't have one with me personally. I kind of wish I did but mine looks to be in very good shape Most are cracked or damaged mine looks to be good again. I'm gonna clean it out re-grease it um, I need to pull out this piece here. As you can see, this one actually comes with a new Durlin piece. So all I gotta do is pull that apart, slide this in, and then we can start reinstalling. 
Realistic, realistically, what took me the longest with this, guys, if you guys want a realistic time, this is about a 30 to a one hour job, depending on your tools, and if you can get these stupid little caps off. These things were by far the biggest pain that I had to deal with. I've taken them off before, and they just always, always, always fight me. They, they're just all for show too, which is frustrating because realistically you don't need them, but I, me and my OCD, I need to have them on there. So next up, what we're gonna do is pull this out and then I'm gonna put it side by side and show you that what the difference is and what's the difference between the two shifters. All right guys, so here's a side by side shot. So looking at it initially, you're like, well Ryan, there's no difference. But what you're really doing is changing the fulcrum point, not the true length of the shifter, like I said before. If you see, they're pretty much identical in length. But if you see here, see the little tab? This one sits further down, this one sits further up. So when you go to shift, you're shifting quicker with this. And on top of this, we have a shift plate to drop it down some too. So it's really gonna change that, uh, the way this fulcrum, the way this is set up. So what we need to do here next is clean out the rest of this gunk and then uh, start getting this installed in and put these solid shifter plate bushings in. Um, this replaces all the old rubber ones. So we'll get this in, put the new mobile one grease in, and I can't wait to see how this feels and shifts now. All right guys, so I've got the shifter back in now. Uh, it does come with a couple extra bolts here. These three longer bolts are intended for these three spots here. Uh, it's when you put that base plate on, which goes underneath, I wanna make sure that's clear guys, that black plastic plate that comes in the kit goes underneath the shifter, not above the shifter. Uh, when you put that under there, it drops at some of those stock bolts that come with the car aren't quite long enough, so Superclass includes the proper length bolts. Um, you just put all the other factory bolts back in. Uh, everything is working good. Now make sure you grease it up too. Uh, it comes with grease. I use my own personally, but yes, it just, I'm excited. I'm excited to uh, get it out and try driving the car now, see how it feels and uh, before I put it all back together. So I'm about to take it for a test drive here, see how it shifts. It's gonna be a little cold, if you can see, I got the top off and it uh, is exactly 31 degrees here. So this ought to be interesting, but. So let's go take it for a drive. Hopefully this picks up for you guys. First off, I get why S2000 guys do this thing where they ride with their top down. I kind of like this. It's not that cold as long as you got your windows up. But then again, I do have a back part to it too. I just have this little bit of rooftop. But number two is, what a difference. It doesn't seem like it's crazy, but it gives you just enough that it's not too crazy tight like my Supra, but it's like happy, that happy in between. And it's not like, it doesn't feel like crap either. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Um, it just, it feels proper. Um, it's just enough so it doesn't move this way or that way. I don't know, I'm just very, very, very happy with it. Uh, highly recommend it, especially for the price too. I thought it was a lot more money. Now again, this is a sponsored ad. Uh, so, you know, obviously I'm not seeing the initial cost. So I gotta look it up online, I'm like, I thought it would've been a lot more money to be honest, because I know how much they cost for the Supra and they knew back in the day were like five, 600 bucks. And he's selling this for like 110 or 120, which is mind blowingly cheap opinion so if you guys don't know you need to get one of these superclass did a great job replicating the c short shifter very very happy with it now i'm going to get home put the rest of the panels back on because uh it just looks janky so let's get it home and finish putting this bad boy back together now we're back at the house here guys i want to do a side by side now obviously i don't have the uh racing shift knob on but it is shorter i just it's hard to represent it but it is definitely shorter uh, it feels a lot better like it would have came back further before that's why there's this gap here uh, This would have really came back before so I I'm definitely much much happier with this like That's it and it's it feels good. It doesn't feel notchy. Some people said it would feel notchy or this or that, and it feels good to me. Very happy with it. I think I'm gonna stick with this for a little bit. Kind of miss having a stock style shift knob, and these are weighted. This is over one pound. That little shift knob is over one pound, which is crazy to me. So very happy with this. Another thing I just noticed though, my steering wheel is starting to just really come apart. I think this was a refinished steering wheel, and that's why it looks so, I mean, it literally looks brand new, it looks perfect. Whenever they refinish them, I think there's something they put under it, and it's just, every time you barely nick it, it's coming off. Now, some people are saying, oh, that's just part of your pants hitting it, et cetera, et cetera. No, so I've got another one in this car. Not many people are able to do this, but I have a comparison wheel, and I've nicked this many of times. You can see this is actually worn, it's starting to get really shiny. Um, and I've hit it a couple times, and it doesn't do that. It leaves like a, well, like a leather material underneath. You can see scuff. 
scuffed and I've done it in my other cars too um, and I've rolled in on this and it doesn't scuff like that wheel does like literally I can't believe I'm gonna do this but just for the video's sake and it's to the point anymore where it's so fucked up that if I can get it here and I'm gonna focus for you guys look at that it doesn't take much at all and it just flakes off like it's uh, that shouldn't happen. If I go do that to my other steering wheel, like I don't even mind doing it because I know nothing will happen. But like this, that's that's not acceptable. Um, like nothing, nothing at all. Um, that that that's not acceptable to me. So it kind of irritates me that it's doing it. Uh, I would like to get a carbon fiber steering wheel for this. So what I might do is flip this one into the MR2, take the one out of the MR2, um, have it sent out to be carbon fiber wrapped, and have a flat bottom installed for this car. I think it'll give it a nice touch, but that would kind of fix this problem. As I don't want to go crazy in this, I kind of like the factory leather look in this car. That's why I like all the leather door cards, the leather seats, etc. So, cool. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Um, it's been fun driving it now with that in there. I'm actually going to take the Super Fur Drive here next. Get a couple more things in. Still waiting for my gauge pod. Gauge pod? Once that comes in, I'll show you guys getting that last bit in for auto extrude. Super excited about this because it's super easy to install, nothing to really take apart, and it sits right on top of your column, which is what I really wanted. So as soon as I get that, guys, I'll show it to you. Thank you guys very much for tuning in today. Do me that favor, go down below, check out the Facebook and Instagram, always posting stuff way ahead of time. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, and let me know down in the comments, what would you like to see different? What would you like to see better? Does this video help you? What would you like to see new content? Let me know, and thank you guys very much. I'm out. Peace.